There are actually a few things uh, you need to know before becoming a product designer and in this video we're gonna cover what they are so that you can actually prepare yourself uh, for your next job with confidence. Let's do this! Hi designers, welcome back to my channel where we talk about uh, design, uh, product uh, and UX and today the most impactful things uh, I wish I knew before switching to UX design and we'll get to that in a minute. I decided uh, to make this video because uh, this is the type of uh, advice I wished I had early on in my career. With so many courses, uh, Slack channels uh, and tools, uh, it's almost impossible not to get overwhelmed by all the things uh, you should be knowing uh, even before you get started. But it's okay, we've all been through similar challenges as UX requires a broad and unique set of skills and knowledge. So the first thing I wish I knew is design strategy. And now it's important to make a distinction between product strategy and design strategy. So product strategy focuses on what a company should invest in building and why it is important. And having a product strategy helps organizations to answer critical questions related to the products uh, they are building. Whereas uh, design strategy is part uh, of the product strategy and focuses on uh, the user needs uh, and uh, making sure the user experience uh, aligns uh, with the objectives uh, of the problem. A product or design strategy can be simply made by using uh, Google Slides uh, and generally there's a template or a format that you can follow to give you some kind of uh, structure and guidance. I think that as designers uh, we're really good at coming up with a solution but uh, we expect uh, someone else uh, to come up with a problem like uh, our PM. And essentially, strategy is defining what are the most important things uh, um, you should be focusing on that can bring uh, the most value to our users uh, and business. Like everything, it takes time and practice, uh, but there are definitely things you can do to prepare yourself for it. But you can also take a course or read a book about strategy for designers, and I'll leave a few links in the description, so make sure to check them out if you want to learn more about this topic. The second thing I didn't know when I got into product design is that a great design is a team effort. And what do I mean by that? I've been a graphic designer for five years before switching to product and the way I used to work with my team was very different. I actually used to work more independently, design on my own from start to finish and share the final thing with my team. Whereas uh, product design is more collaborative and requires uh, input and feedback. So when I got started in product design, I struggled <laughs> with sharing my early stage uh, designs uh, because, you know, I didn't want anyone to see my ugly sketches and wireframes. This is something you wouldn't normally do if you are a graphic designer, for example, because it's almost impossible to imagine how the final design is going to look like based on some random sketches. So sharing early and often is key for product designers, but you also need to learn how to ask for feedback and really bring your engineers and product manager into your design process. You can, for example, start by inviting them into your Figma files. So product design is really a team effort, especially when you're working on complex products. I actually can't remember a single time when I got uh, at the end of a project uh, with a solution that uh, came just from me without it being influenced by somebody else. To give you some practical advice, uh, I like doing uh, brainstorming and uh, problem solving sessions uh, in Miro as a way to generate ideas and work together with my team. And if that's something you'd be interested to see, don't know, maybe it can be a topic for another video. But for now, just remember that uh, your true power as a designer is to use your team's talent and knowledge to guide you through the best solution for your users. Another thing I didn't know when I got started is that uh, tools <laughs> don't matter as much as we think. And whether it's Figma, Sketch or XD, at the end of the day, they all do similar things. Most companies use Figma, so maybe you can start from that. I think that most design tools are very easy to learn and they come up with ready-made templates, which is always a nice feature to have. But when I was teaching myself UX design a few years back, I was very determined to learn all the tools I heard about from other designers. So if I was starting out again, I would probably invest my time into developing my soft skills other than using a tool I would never use at work. Although I still think design tools are very powerful as they enable us to perform our work faster and more efficient and efficient 
efficiently. The real challenge here is really to find the right tool for the right purpose. So for example, I use Figma as a prototyping tool, Miro for design crits and Google Slides for presentations. But you can choose whatever tool feels more natural for you. All right, my next point is that design is not a linear process. So if you design and ship a product or feature without putting it in front of your users, chances are it's not going to work. And if it does work for you, please let me know how you did it in the comments. But uh, if you're like most designers, uh, you might need to revisit your solutions uh, a few times uh, before uh, you get it right. This can be, you know, because uh, the business requirements have changed or usability tests uh, reveal some problems with your prototypes. There are ways uh, to prevent this from happening, like uh, getting regular feedback and sharing uh, your work uh, on a regular basis. But most of the times uh, it's not under our control so just get in the mindset of a constant uh, iteration and uh, yeah don't get too emotionally attached to your uh, ideas as well but when I got started one thing that held me back uh, from the job market was my imposter syndrome and lack of confidence in my skills and over the past uh, years I've been mentoring so many designers uh, who faced uh, the same thing so what experience has taught me is that uh, Simply, you don't need to be an expert. And now I find myself uh, saying this uh, quite often. You don't need to be a specialist uh, in all the possible subsets of uh, UX and product design. And it, it's most likely you will never be. I want to bring you an example to explain this concept uh, a little bit better. So I come from a graphic and artistic uh, background. So when I switched to UX, I was able to transfer some of my hard skills like uh, typography, UI, illustration and visual design to my new role. But on the other hand, I was lacking many other skills like research, strategy and product thinking. And it took me a year or so to balance out uh, those skills. But the point I want to make uh, is that uh, if you set yourself goals of diving into specific subsets of UX, you will naturally start learning toward uh, one area or another. All right, so thanks for taking your time to hear my story. I really hope it was somehow helpful. And if you enjoyed this type of content, uh, don't forget to subscribe. And this way you can also support my channel. If you enjoyed the video, just leave a like and I will be be very happy about that. Okay, so I really wish you good luck with your career and um, till the next one. Ciao!